This is Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Thank you so much for making today's show a part of your day. There are so many other talented content creators out there, so many great Eagles content options. So anytime you decide to hang out with us, we appreciate you. That means that you're a real one. Before we take your questions on today's show and open up the floor to hear from our loyal subscribers, make sure you subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. More draft content to come all throughout this month. We've done some draft content this week. We've been doing draft content for months at this point. So hit that sub button, lock us in, and as always, go Barons. Paul C. gets us started with the $5 Super Chat. If Brian Thomas, the LSU wide receiver, is available, do you think the Eagles pick him or another position like cornerback or offensive line? My read on what the Eagles do in the first round, they go offensive line. Offensive line depth is a little bit of an issue right now because Sua Opeta, Jack Driscoll, they left to go elsewhere in free agency to try to get some more run and some more playing time with their new respective teams. So now the Eagles are a little bit thin along the offensive line, and we know that's a position group that Howie Roseman always likes to invest in. Would not rule out a trade up for an offensive lineman. A Troy Fuatano out of Washington, an Amarius Mims out of Georgia, Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma, Graham Barton, offensive lineman out of Duke along the interior, Jackson Powers Johnson, another interior offensive lineman. He played center for Oregon. Those players are names to keep an eye out for for the offensive line. But if the Eagles have Brian Thomas as one of the highest graded prospects on their draft board and he somehow falls, they have shown that they will go best player available regardless of need. And I do think wide receiver three is a need. Cornerback is a need. That's why I'm fascinated to see what the Eagles do. But right now my read, offensive line for Howie Roseman on night one. Jason Chadwick with the $5 Super Chat, and he corrected this with the, another message. He said, Devontae Smith contract extension coming soon. I really would love Justin Simmons, but I want Xavier Worthy. So a couple of things to talk about here. First, the Devontae Smith contract extension. Tim McManus, Eagles insider for ESPN, reported earlier this week that the wheels are in motion and the Eagles are working behind the scenes to sign Devontae Smith to a long-term deal to keep him in Philadelphia for the foreseeable future. As of this recording during our live show on Wednesday, no new updates on the Justin Simmons front. It makes sense for so many reasons. Safety is still a need. It allows you to use C.J. Gardner-Johnson as a roamer, as a versatile chess piece. You were bad at forcing teams into turnovers last year. Justin Simmons leads the NFL in picks, since coming into the league in 2016. Scheme familiarity. He played under Vic Fangio with the Denver Broncos, and he's a four-time All-Pro in this league. He makes your defense better for a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. It has been clear that Philadelphia's tried to get younger on defense this year. They had the third oldest defense in the NFL in 2023. They've gotten a lot younger, but Justin Simmons is still playing at a really good level, and does he make your football team better? If the answer to that question is yes, I'm going after Justin Simmons. Andrew Nathan, I went back to look at past drafts, and when we traded up for Dillard, Devontae Smith, Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, we only moved up one to three spots. Do you believe it's more for an offensive lineman or defensive lineman than a defensive back? Personally, I want a defensive back. All of this is a very interesting conversation, and you're right. Howie Roseman has moved up a lot, and it hasn't been a sizable move up with the exception of when he moved up for Carson Wentz, which actually took two different trades for the Eagles to get to number two to take him behind Jared Goff. And what's interesting is that per Spotrax NFL draft picks value chart, the Eagles picks in the first and second round, 22, 50, and 53, are I think the fourth most valuable behind Washington, the Bears, the Cardinals, New England Patriots. So they're fifth most valuable as far as all of those teams' first and second round picks combined. So if you trade 22 and 50, I think it allows you to move up several spots to get to the mid-teens to take a player that you like, and that's within range, I think, for Howie Roseman there, Andrew. David Marcella, first of all, F. Trizzy. 
What chance do we have of getting Justin Simmons or Patrick Sertan? Always F. Trizzy. My man barely produces for Eagles now any longer, but it's all good because I got the homie here, producer Chip, who's a lifelong diehard Eagles fan who's crushing the game, and he helped us hire another real one in Reed Barkus, who's another Eagles fan. We have Eagles fans taking over the chat sports office. Go Birds! It's fantastic, but always F. Trizzy. And, of course, you're saying that as a joke because Trizzy's a legend here at Chat Sports. To other legends in Justin Simmons and Patrick Sertan, what are the chances of getting Simmons? Very good. If Howie wanted him, he could pay for him. The Eagles still have plenty of cap space left, and for the reasons that I just noted, I think it makes a lot of sense. Patrick Sertan, I don't think after the luxurious need trade that you have to surrender and part with a first-round pick. Could you trade 50 and 53? And maybe a mid-round pick for Patrick Sertan. And could that move the needle for the Denver Broncos? Something to think about. Iron Mike, 462. Am I the only one upset about playing a team in Brazil that has the same colors as the Brazilian flag? Spin zone? Eagles Kelly green colors? Very similar to the Brazilian colors. The Eagles also going to technically be the home team. They still have eight home games next year, by the way, so it's not really taking one away. I think it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for the Eagles to play the first ever NFL game in Brazil. It's a great opportunity for the channel here to do a watch party on a Friday when all eyeballs are going to be on that game. It's a great opportunity as a litmus test game to see how Philadelphia fares and how they match up against the Packers team that I think is going to be one of the best teams in the NFL, one of the best teams in the NFC. Their roster is loaded. They're four or five deep at wide receiver, two deep at tight end. They signed Josh Jacobs as running back. They're retinkering with that defense. And it's just an opportunity to spread the Eagles brand nationwide. And I think Eagles fans are going to take over. Either way, going to be a lot of green in Brazil come September 6th. Peter Thurman, who is the one player you would move up in the draft for? The one player I would move up in the draft for from 22. It's a good question. Um, I mean, if Joe Alt falls outside of the top 10, I think he's going to be a future Hall of Fame right tackle. Now, you do have Lane Johnson. Alt might be too tall to play at guard, but my gosh, he is a dog who I absolutely love. If Dallas Turner falls outside of the top 10, you want to get your quick, twitchy edge rusher with a lot of bend, you can move up for Dallas Turner, the edge rusher out of Alabama. There aren't a lot of players that I think the Eagles would like need to move up for. The player who I've talked about a lot, honestly, now that I think about it, I just had to rack my brain, Quinian Mitchell. I think Quinian Mitchell is the top corner in this draft class. And if he's there at 14, 15, could the Eagles move up from 22? So there we go. That answers the question there, Peter. I'm moving up for Quinian Mitchell. I think he's the number one caliber corner, great ball skills, a ton of pass breakups throughout his entire career. I don't worry about the lack of competition at Toledo. The production's been there. The athletic testing numbers were fantastic. He's long, he's lengthy, he's aggressive, he has swagger. He's just a perfect type of Eagles player. Reminds me a lot of Sauce Gardner. Would you have moved up for Sauce Gardner? I would have. Andrew Nathan, there aren't any reports that the Eagles are interested in Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Do you think it's because they knew all they need to know or they aren't interested? It could be they're not all that interested. It could be they're very interested, but they know him very well because his dad was Jeremiah Trotter and they don't need to do a lot of intel on the player, he could be a little bit too small for what they're looking for at the linebacker spot because he is a little bit smaller as far as his height, and he struggles a little bit against the pass. But look, when I turn on the tape, sometimes what I look for, instinctual players. And Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is an instinctual, smart player. Now, N'Kobe Dean is a smaller linebacker. And maybe the Eagles are gun-shy now because he's a smaller linebacker, he's been hurt, they don't want to draft another smaller linebacker. That could be an issue. But all of those things could be reasons why. Be sure to subscribe to us here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. 
If you want to join our live shows, join our mailbags. That's an opportunity for you to do that. Thanks for watching the show as always and supporting us here at Chat Sports.